includes all the speaker slips I have before me. Um, I am now open it back for discussion at council. Mr. King, did you have something? Or you're okay? I will. Mr. Milbury, did you have it? I'm going to just go down the line. Just, we do have a motion and a second on the floor. First, just discussion. I'll say something, say, and have everybody else to say something on this. Um, <laughs> this issue is uh, definitely something that uh, I was a proponent of long before my sister got cancer. But when she got cancer, it definitely hit home a little bit harder. Um, when I heard that she was going through uh, chemotherapy, uh, I was the first one to start working on my parents about allowing her to get chemo because everybody knows how it could be a little bit difficult coming up to your parents about that. But uh, this isn't exactly my favorite initiative, I guess I should say. I would have liked to see it a little bit more uh, confined to one area, but uh, I do applaud the rest of my council members about this. Um, I do believe that uh, this has been, this issue's been kicked kick down the road long enough, we should uh, go ahead and uh, put it on the ballot and let the people vote. I think it's um, commendable that um, people were able to get so many signatures um, in Imperial Beach uh, to do this and that it should uh, therefore go on the ballot. Um, but I have real problems with this map and the ability to locate dispensaries in any and all areas without any kind of, of, of regard to the land uses around them and that sort of thing. Uh, so my view, and I'll say this to the council and the public and, and the mayor and everyone else, is that I think it's our responsibility to put an alternative measure on the ballot that allows dispensaries and allows people to vote to have dispensaries because that's a, that's obviously what the ballot measure does here. We cannot adjust it in any way, um, but uh, that allows reasonable distances between parks and other uses uh, that are important to uh, families with children, etc. Um, and still allows it in Imperial Beach. But I don't know whether we can construct such a measure in the time uh, it's going to take to get it on the ballot. So I defer to the city manager and council on that. That's a question. I still want to walk through the back. Council Member Spurgeon, you're asking what it would take to put a competing ballot measure on the uh, on the November ballot. We would have to be back before you uh, in time to submit it to the Registrar voters by August 10th. Uh, the next council meeting is August 1st. It might be a tall order to get it done by August 1st. In fact, I don't believe we can, uh, given the fact that uh, staff reports and uh, need to be in quite ahead of time. So it would likely necessitate uh, a special meeting at which we discuss it. Uh, if the city attorney has any different opinion, we could defer to her. I think, yeah, we're, we are short on time, so it would, you know, the longer we have, the more we can think about issues and, and address them in there, but, you know, it's up to the council if you want it to come back at an August 1st meeting or a competing measure, or if you want to do a special meeting, the deadline is August 10th, so. I would say at least have something before August 10th. So you, you could submit it if that's what you were going to consider. Uh, then a technical question. Uh, is this a separate um, discussion and <coughs> council vote from the motion that's currently on the table? I believe, that, I mean, it, it's not a either, it is an either or essentially. You can vote to put it on the the initiative that's been proposed, put that on the ballot with the motion that the mayor made, if the motion is to approve all three resolutions, that is done, and then you can have a discussion on whether or not the council is interested in, in a competing ballot measure. I, I raise that because I feel uh, a sense of responsibility that the voters should have 
uh, and it may get more votes if there is a reasonable opportunity to locate dispensaries in uh, in areas that will raise the fewer objections in the community. So it would be hard for me to vote for this without knowing that we're going to, well, because we have a motion and a second on the floor, if that item is something you would like to bring up and make a motion to do that after we dealt with this, that's fine. I don't think we can guarantee you're going to get that after this one. I don't think that's how the system works. Here. That's exactly my point, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> I exactly see where you're going point. from. My, my point is, is exactly. Unless the, the motion maker and the seconder want to amend the motion. I'm, I'm, I've expressed my opinion on that particular <coughs> item, even though we haven't had further discussion on it. So as the maker of the motion, I'm not going to amend my motion. But I can totally sympathize with Mr. Spriggs' is caught between one thing to put one on the ballot, but he would like to have a discussion and see if the council would support him on the other item. And I, I, I see where you're caught between it because the motion is already out before us now. Well, it has to do with, with what the council is voting for. The, vote, it, it, the it, motion it, correctly right now is strictly option number two with the three resolutions. And I believe I had a second on that particular motion. So the, if we want to discuss option number four, which is to put, consider a competing ballot measure, we can have that discussion after the vote on this first motion. That is one way to do it, for sure. Uh, <laughs> the way it's posed in the report is that these are all options that, in theory, can be discussed, you know, as as a group. Uh, I say that simply because no, we can discuss it some more. But I can't. I, 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 I say, well, I say it because uh, if we were to vote on this measure to put it on the ballot, uh, then each one of us is saying that we're prepared to support an unregulated any location. I, I, Mr. Spriggs, I totally disagree with you. I do not support the initiative. I support the 1,012 people that their votes and signatures were counted. Yes. 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 I support strictly the resolutions we adopted months ago that some people consider a ban. I do not interpret it as a ban. That's what I support, but I have no intention of me personally voting for this initiative. <laughs> And I don't think our vote says we're supporting it. We are supporting the idea that we have a petition before us that has to put something on the ballot. Amen. I, I agree that that is the reality, uh, that we would be voting to put it on the ballot, to pass this measure through to put it on the ballot, and I think that's fine. Um, but I think what my concern is, uh, is that uh, is that we have all we all agree that there are that, that there are flaws in this measure. So, uh, to to a large extent, if we if we pass this forward and it is enacted, we have some responsibility for the fact that if it is enacted by the voters, we pass forward a flawed measure. The way we cure that is by giving voters a better option at the same time. So that's all that I'm saying. So I, I totally understand where you're coming from, and I can I can see that reasoning and that logic. Is good. I mean, there's other things in here because there could be opposing. Yeah. Um, the city attorney help me what you call that that goes on the ballot that would oppose a, a particular initiative. If there is a citizens group or a group of folks that want to put in a statement explaining why they are against it, they're totally legally allowed to do that. Am I not correct? Right. Okay, there are valid arguments in favor and there are ballot arguments against. So I mean, whether it be the on. folks that are here this evening or even a, a different group from Imperial Beach that want to put that on as an opposing, that's that's not the system. As I, I, you know, give me a, a yes or a no and this is the reasons why and then you either believe what people put out as factual or not. <coughs> but I mean, I, I'm going to, you know, unless other council members have a thing, I, I, I think that we should have a discussion on your idea. But I believe we have a motion and a second on the floor at the moment. And I'm going to call for the vote. Before you do that, I want the city to turn 
submits this initiative to the election. The second resolution um, sets the priorities for the filing of the arguments in favor and against, and as well directs the city attorney to, to draft an impartial analysis of the measure. And the last resolution is the one that calls or allows for rebuttal arguments. So the mayor's motion is to approve all of those three resolutions, which would have the effect of taking every step the council needed to put this initiative on the November 2012 ballot. With, with rebuttal, correct? Right, it has the arguments in favor, the arguments against, and the rebuttal. Okay. On the arguments in favor of against and against, the resolution authorizes, the, as it's written, that the city council, either all together or individually, you're authorized to submit or sign a written argument in favor or against the measure. So it, it authorizes that action too. And, and then under the elections code, if council members sign a ballot argument, say in favor or against the measure, those arguments are given priority. The proponents are given priority also, you know, the proponents of a ballot measure for obviously the argument in favor. If, if hypothetically council members were to sign an argument against that would have a priority and would be the one appearing on the ballot as the argument against. So that is all embodied with the resolutions that are part of the mayor's motion. Okay. Mr. Mayor, this is where I had a little concern and I wondered, I wanted your thoughts on this. Had you given any ideas of how, as a council, we were going to address that? Was it going to be collectively or individually? And um, well, I mean, a technically as a council, we, we have to have discussion only in a meeting such as this. So to come up with a, if it was a rebuttal or an opposing argument, it would be in an open meeting like this. I had always felt that there would probably be a group or whether it be small, large, medium from Imperial Beach that would be opposed to something such as this. And if the council members want to do interact with them and sign off on it with the city attorney has said that as an op opposition to this particular initiative, that statement would be on the ballot because a council member or a group of council members had put their name on it just signing off on it. They didn't even have to write the thing. But if we try to do it as a council, we're going to be sitting up here in front of a group of people trying to come up with wording to put together. And I don't particularly um, favor that idea. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, I, I, I mean, I, if, as I said, I am not in favor of this particular initiative. I am in favor of putting it on the ballot. If a group came up with a reasonable argument why, and not one that just says I'm opposed, that's based on some sort of what I consider facts. I would mm -hmm. definitely be willing personally to sign something like that. But that, that's it. I, I did not ever envision us as a group making that particular statement. Okay. The impartial part that the city attorney is talking about is going to put factual information out there that specifies from an attorney's standpoint what the initiative says and what the effects are on Imperial Beach. It's not going to go in there and say, this is my opinion or your opinion. That's not the attorney's position. Well, that's what I was hoping for was would be the deletion of any editorializing city attorney's part or our parts as well. But that's but the rebuttal argument, is that correct? Okay, so the impartial analysis is strictly about the law. So it would probably say, this is the current law, and this is what happens if the initiative is passed, and this is the number of votes that are required on the, you know, that you need a majority vote. So it is strictly about the law, not with vote in favor, vote against. 
Um, if I could ask a question of sure. our city clerk at this point, is that analysis limited to a certain number of words? Yes. 250. Either 500 or 250. Yeah. I didn't miss It's 500. 500. Mm -hmm. And that information goes where? On the voter pamphlet. It goes in the voter information pamphlet. Okay. Yes. And and the way that resolutions are drafted, the entire ordinance, the wording of the initiative, as it would not be in the voter information pamphlet. So my impartial analysis will give. You know, here's what happens if you have a yes vote, here's what happens if you have a no vote. At the end of it, the law requires that if we are not putting the entire text of the ordinance in the voter information pamphlet, that we say, this is just an analysis, impartial analysis of the ordinance, You're in, you can get a copy of the entire ordinance by calling the city clerk's office and put the number in there. So that will appear in the voter pamphlet, as well as the argument in favor, and then the argument against, and those are, Obviously, um, those are arguments as opposed to an impartial analysis. Okay. The, the, the other thing to mention, which I don't, you know, the idea of the council drafting an impartial analysis here on the dais is obviously, you know, not appropriate, but if a majority of the council wanted to direct staff to draft an impartial analysis and bring it back to a council meeting, you could adopt it at that time, obviously. Staff is not impartial. I'm sorry, not a partial analysis, the argument against. So I just the argument to, against, but right, that would I'm sorry. be uh, that was, yeah, that, 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 did you get clarification on that? Well there's an impartial well the impartial analysis is what the law says it is. The impartial analysis is what the law says it is. That is determined by an election code section. And, and it, the city attorney is responsible for writing that. The competing ballot measure or, a, or an argument against the ballot measure can be drafted by any council member and any member of the public. The election code gives priority to the council members, the elected officials, when deciding which, which argument against would appear on the ballot. If this council elected as a, as a majority of the council to draft a compete or a, a, an argument against, we, that would take the highest priority in terms of what argument against the ballot initiative would appear on the, the ballot. If it's the will of the council, the majority of the council, they can so draft in a, an opposition statement to the ballot initiative. So that might address Councilmember Sprigg's concerns as supporting a vote, but offic going, officially going on record as opposing the measure, if it is the, the majority support of the council to do so. And so is that then <coughs> option number four? No. That would be with, uh, with option number two, if all this council chose to do is support the motion that's on the floor and, and the recommended option of option two, this measure would appear on the ballot. Then the proponents get to draft a, a support statement for that ballot initiative and this council or council members or any opposition party can submit a statement in opposition to the ballot measure. And again, the council by the election code has priority over selection of, of your statement of opposition, if it, if it so chooses to present one. That, that, is in, that is separate from providing or recommending that we draft a competing ballot measure. That's under, that's under option four. So if after the motion that's on the floor, uh, the council wants to uh, consider a new motion to adopt option four and direct staff to come back with a competing ballot measure, that's a separate issue. And it would take a majority of the council to direct staff to do that. Okay, thank you. Mr. King. Uh, just real quick, I think it's very unfortunate that this measure uh, is the way it's drafted. It has some, some holes in it that uh, one, for example, very simple, very simple here. It says that, uh, it's kind of amazing. One second here. Uh, city Council take no action to deny your vote or suspend a license. We can't comment on that. Like, when do you take the power away from the city to suspend something that there's problems? That, to me, there's wording problems here that I have problems with. The fact that the whole zone, I, I think it's unfortunate that the people who drafted this 
did not take into consideration what the city was trying to do and expand it within a reasonable way rather than spreading the zones all over the city. At the same time, I support the right of people to use the initiative process to get some direct democracy. And that's kind of where I So once any other council members, we have a motion and a second on the floor, and I'd like to get a vote on this particular motion. So could you please vote all in favor of, well, we have a push button vote. Motion carried by the following vote. Eyes, Jenny, Bragg, Gray, <laughs> Nose, Spriggs. I saw this coming from a mile away. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, now we're talking something that, you know, none of us really are too happy about, but this is what we have. Instead, we could have, you know, zoned it like an adult bookstore, and all they were asking for was one. That's all we wanted. I totally suck it up. Um, what's the feasibility of using the same zoning ordinances that we already have on the books with uh, adult bookstores? 